Hi there, Fack from Fack Ironworks. Welcome to this video. I decided we need to do just something straightforward in the repouche vein. Uh, I used to call the, the term repose was the way I said it for many years and then I was informed by someone from the French persuasion that it was something more like repouche and uh, that's the way I've been saying it for the last couple of years but then it's been pointed out to me even though I feel that I'm quite a cunning linguist in my pronunciation, it was recently pointed out to me by a lovely French woman that I have not yet mastered the French tongue. So, anyway, we could just call it embossing. I don't know. Anyway, what we're doing here is some Celtic knot work. And I don't know, Eric, if you can get... Is that visible? So what I've done is I drew out a piece um, and drew it onto a piece of cardboard and then with a scalpel or exacto knife, if you will, I cut that out, a very laborious process, took me a couple of hours. But anyway, it got this um, form here that I can then put onto my piece of brass. So I'm using brass, which I have already annealed. I've got a piece of brass here and then I put my piece of cardboard on and sharpied out the outline so I've got my base outline there. So what I'm going to do now is start forming that um, over top of my um, table here which I use for this process and typically I put this onto a wood backer for this process but I just thought as a fun experiment I would take this piece of leather here and use that as my backer which should be a, a decent backer but see what sort of embossed um, impression I leave by um, roughing out onto the metal, having it pushing into the leather. So let's just see what happens with that. Uh, anyway, without further ado, let me get this thing clamped onto my table and we will begin. All right, so I've done the first pass there um, with my cutout tracing, I don't know how to stencil, whatever. Um, what I'm gonna do now is connect the lines um, and start ghosting them in there so I can, the pattern will start emerging. So let me show you, for example, this one right here. And I need to start seeing how this all interconnects and start getting the knot work. Working, not working, it is working, confusing. Okay, so I've got my first pass done. I'm going to now pull it off the leather and let's see the grand reveal, see what this actually looks like. Uh, okay, I suppose I could, I don't know. I could use this for um, a template for embossing, further embossing there. It's, it's kind of in there and the impression is somewhat there. It's a starting point anyway. So. Anyway, I will put that aside. That was an experiment that uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be a, a help if I'm going to emboss leather or not. Anyway, moving on. This piece is now work hardened. I need to anneal that. So I'm gonna go over to the forge and get it annealed, soften things up, and then we'll be able to get from the inside and push some things out and get ready for pass number two.
All right, so that was pass number two. I did that, by the way, with this um, chisel pretty much um, every every little bit of it um, with just a uh, kind of dull, but getting a little bit sharper in the detail. Um, so let's to recap pass number one, we did into leather as a backer, which typically I use plywood. I'm just doing leather as an experiment. Pass number two was um, clamped directly to the table and just pushing things down there. I'm just kind of defining the lines and getting my intersections all um, delineated. Uh, now I'm going to anneal again to soften things up um, because the metal has worked hardened once again. And then once it's annealed, then I'm going to bulge out the back a little bit and we're gonna put the pitch in and pass number three will have a pitch backer. Let's do it. Forgot to mention, um, on pass number one, working into the leather or the wood backer, I was um, going straight up and down with the chisel. Pass number two, when I had some bulging there, I was pushing on a 45 to push my um, lines inward. Everything started out a little bit chunky, and now to refine them, I'm pushing it in on a 45. I don't know if that was noticeable on the camera, but thought I should mention that at this point. Okay, so this piece has been annealed and then just with a rubber mallet, I roughly pushed everything out. I don't know if you can see that it's bulged, um, but it's sitting up a good half inch from the edges there. What this is gonna allow me to do is from the back, now start melting in some pitch. And I've got some brand new pitch from California. California red pitch, medium. That's what I'm using for this, if that means anything to you. So, let us begin. All right, so I'm in almost done pass number three. This is the pass with the pitch as the backer there. And that allows me to, um, it's not caving in as much is, is basically the simple way to say that. So I'm able to um, delineate further than I did the last time. And you can see, you see I need to do a little bit more here, but over here it's sharpening up quite a bit. And you could, um, Dep now you get to the point where, when do you stop? The law of diminishing returns. Um, we, I could even uh, quote the 80-20 rule and say that I'm 80% there at this point in time, but the next 20% is gonna take me as long as this first um, 80% um, did. We're several hours into it and I could spend an indefinite number of hours more. The question will be how much time do I actually want to commit to this? And I always talk about that with, with my art is that Time is always part of the equation of what your finished product is gonna be. How much time do you wanna put into it? How much time warrants um, you know, the, the finished product? What, what finish are you trying to do? I tend to go for rustic stuff. I like things that look handmade. So um, I try not to overdo things or, or, or take it to jewelry quality. This one, I'm just gonna have to see. I don't know how far I'm gonna take this. I'm not sure how far the definition needs to go. Um, and listen to me ramble on blah, 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 blah. Once I finish this, I'm gonna pop it off, take the pitch out, and then I'm going to drop down the backgrounds. Right now, the, the pitch pushing against there, I can't really push those down too much. There's too much resistance there. So that, that will be my next step, push that down. And then I should have a much more um, crisp, 3 d 
uh, of, of what is going on. And then from there, it's just endless refining. So uh, my video guy here, Eric has to go. He's got other things to do. I think I'll spend a, another hour or two playing with this. And then we will regroup another time and see where we're gonna take it. So that's it, see you soon. All right, a few days have elapsed and I put in, in the meantime, I don't know, maybe two or three hours into this. I'm assuming you as the viewer have seen something much sharper in detail. Um, I've been with it so long, I've kind of lost objective um, viewpoint. Anyway, I'm nearing the finish line. I've reached the level of refinement that I think is suitable for this given project. Um, at least I'm happy with it. I just want to demonstrate uh, the fine detail on my little devil dog here, Hound of Hell. Um, I'm, so I'm just going to do some of that and then show you how I do the background into there and then we will work on the edge. So without further ado, I will begin. All right, now I uh, got the facial details in place more or less here. Now I want to work on the outside band and I just want to show you my technique for that. Rather than laboriously trying to keep a very straight line by chiseling in by eyeball, what I do is take a piece of 7 16 round in this case, just happened to be the right diameter, and I've cut it to the appropriate length and round it over the ends there. Now what I want to do is slide that into place and grab my raising hammer. Kind of tap down to get it captured. I've got, damn it, that, now I will clamp. So I'm clamping the bar to the table in the appropriate spot here, hopefully. And now I get a long, rounded chisel. And just start dropping the edge in around the bar. All right, we're in the home stretch here. Our, I've, at least I've reached the level of detail that I'm willing to put into this. I think um, I could certainly do another pass or 10, but uh, I'm happy with the amount of refinement I've done that. I thought I would just point out the chisels that I used, chisels and punches I used in this particular one. I think I'm missing one. This guy, that was my background dimpler. So, those were uh, just a handful, not, not that many that you needed to actually do this amount of work. Uh, what I had just finished doing was rolling the edge back. I've just kind of tucked it in behind here. This is gonna be a freestanding thing, but I've rolled this back so I've got a safety edge there. And everything is quite rigid. Everything is also sitting flat. Now what we're gonna do is put on our patina and pull out the highlights and just make this pop. So I'm going to be using black patina, which is uh, for stained glass. Um, typically I'll use gun blue for this, which is a little stronger nitric acid. This is a weaker version of it. Um, I'm just finding it hard to get to with supply chain issues in our post-COVID universe that we're living in. So this stuff works a little bit slower, but a similar effect. 
I just paint this on, wait for things to darken up. Tempting as it is, please refrain from drinking this stuff. All right, once things have darkened up, you neutralize it by putting it in water. And when it is still wet, I will do my typical steel wool to pull out the highlights fairly quickly. Oh yeah. Something like that. So I will now let that dry out and then I will wax it and we'll take a look at the finished product. All right, moment of truth. So this panel I made, I, I did my bookshelf here a couple of months ago and I have my speaker changer here, which I think looked kind of ugly. Um, I put this piece of steel on here, the books go over top of it, but I didn't like that piece of tech there with my nice ancient looking books. So that's what this is for. Let's just see. Holy cow, look at that. It fits like it was made for it. So there we go. I think that is a lovely addition to my bookshelf. Uh, quite pleased with the, really my first foray into Celtic knotwork in uh, uh, Rapush uh, fashion, but I think I'll be doing more of that. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I found it quite um, entertaining for myself and I think fairly informative, but let me know if you have any questions on how the process goes. Um, I want to do some more videos of laying out this sort of technique because I, I do get a lot of requests for that. So that's it for now. Um, I will see you in the next video. Please subscribe, like, comment below, all that good stuff. Uh, say goodbye, Prudence. Back out. See ya!